I'm Michael Hare, and today we have the F4F Wildcat from Blitz RC Works sold by Banana Hobby. It came nicely packaged, as you can see, in a brown box to protect it. And now we're going to see the inside. Well, as you can see, it's the World War II F4F Wildcat, and it's available in two colors, the uh, more traditional blue and the pre-war colorful version with yellow and silver. And I do not know what I've been set to review yet. Okay, well it's the silver and yellow one, so it'll be more colorful than the World War II version in my opinion. As you can see, the box has been designed and molded in foam to specifically fit the parts of the F4F. In fact, it looks like everything has arrived perfectly. I will cut the tape off, lay the parts out, and be right back with you. Well, as you can see, I've laid out the parts. Everything came separately bagged with the exception of the instruction manual, which didn't need a bag. We have the vertical stabilizer and rudder. We have the right wing panel, yellow on top, silver on the bottom, left wing panel. We have a propeller. We have the inner panels for the wings because the wings will be pivoting and they are yellow and silver. We have the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. And we have a bag with the uh, con connecting rods and screws and it looks like uh, control horns and some covers for servos or where the arms go. So it's a small part count. It should be quick to assemble. It should be easy to assemble. I'm going to take the parts out of their bags at this point and look at the instructions. And when I know what I'm supposed to do, I'll be right back with you. As you can see, the parts are now out of the bag. The fuselage has the retracts, has the rudder and elevator servos already mounted back here at the tail end, and has good panel lines. The paint job appears to be in good shape and the fuselage is in good shape. The main mounting I'm going to have to do are the center wing panels and attaching the wings to them on a pivot point that then locks in place with a pin. I will have to put the control horns on the flying surfaces such as here and activate the servo and connect the uh, servo with a control rod to the horns. The small parts are laid out, and I'll show this to you close up. The propeller has some nice detail with decals on it, as does the rudder with a decal on both the stab and the rudder itself. Should go together pretty quickly. I place some of the small parts in the bowl, and as I open the bags, I'll place the rest of them. Some covers. These are the pins that used to pivot, hard to see in the plastic screws for mounting the, the uh, control horns, which were back here in the bowl, and the control rods, and a Y harness. The horizontal stab and elevator, the rudder close up, the propeller close up, the center wing panel for the right side, the right wing panel, the left center section, the left wing panel, and the fuselage. I'll get to work and be back with you shortly. Control horns were supplied. Three were this size and one was different. It has a shorter fin and looking over the parts, this one goes in the elevator. The other three are ailerons and rudder. The control horns have all been mounted. There's one on the elevator, one on the rudder, and two on the ailerons. The instruction manual discusses four sizes of screws, but I only found three. Very simply, the longest two are used on the rudder in the front. Then there are eight medium size. Two are used here, and two are used in the front on the elevator and both ailerons. And then there are six smaller screws. They are used in the back on the elevator and on the ailerons. So it's really quite simple, even if you only have three different size screws, I had no trouble getting the assembly done. The next step is gluing the stabilizer to the fuselage. That's the horizontal stabilizer. There is a molded slot here and here into which this pin and this plug 
will be inserted. So I'm going to put the glue, which I failed to cover earlier, that came in the kit to glue that on. After that's on, I will then glue on the rudder, which fits into a slot on the horizontal stabilizer. And there's a black pin that goes in the back right here and into the fuselage right there. This is the pin and I have pre-poked it into the places where it's supposed to go. I have applied glue to the fuselage right here where the horizontal stabilizer will go and here on the stabilizer in the center section. You want to press uniformly on both sides so that it's sitting squarely in the saddle to keep it level. We don't want it tilted either way. We want it horizontal for proper control. Now I'm just going to let that set up for a while. I found the pins to be a very tight fit, but if you work them back and forth in and out a little bit, it gets easier. Right now it's a very easy fit for me here. It's very snug there. It also slides well on the main wing section but I'm working them so that they will slide in and not have to be forced in when I go to join the two together. It's much like hinging a door in the house. You'll have three sets of hinges there, you've got three here to go through, and you may have to use a little force, but you want to use as little as possible so that you don't destroy anything. Okay, I've got the pin through the first three, and now I'm going to have to work the hinge a bit and push down from above to get it into the fourth one and so on. Almost there. I've got one more slot to go, but I've uh, tested out the pin and I'm holding the wing folded back in place with, with the pin. It will also lock the wing in the uh, ready to fly position when I swing the wing forward. But One more slot to go and the wing is done. I found that removing the paint from between the surfaces where the hinges are going to interact and where the uh, pin has to go is very helpful. I used my X-Acto knife to get the paint out of, off of those surfaces by just slightly scraping it off and using the point of the knife to get the paint out of the holes so that the pin fits much more easily having done that on this the second wing. Okay, This is the uh, hinge pin on the second wing. I've got it all the way through. I just need to put the retainer clip on it. But before I do that, I'm going to pull the aileron extension wire underneath here and through. And then off camera, I will insert it down the line. And this way it will go up into the fuselage. With the exception of the control rod, the, the wing has been completed. The hinge pin has been inserted and the clip has been put on both the top and the bottom. The aileron extension wire has been run into the slot and the pin has been proven to lock the wing. This is viewed from above and the clip is on place on the hinge pin. So we have one wing with the exception of its control rod completely finished here. Both wings are done, ready to be joined to the fuselage. The rudder, I'm going to glue the pivot pin or hinge in here and have some glue on the end so it will go in there. I will have glue here and on the face there. So here and here. None down here except on the, on the pivot hinge. And uh, I will want the hinge turned sideways for movement left and right. Okay, the glue is applied. First action is to line up the hinge pin. Start inserting it and push it forward once it's aligned. I'm having a little trouble. There we go. Now we push the uh, vertical stabilizer down and in place and just have a little bit of glue oozing out, but that's fine. Well, the tail is dry because I've been gone for a while. A five or six channel receiver is all you need since I have a uh, available Futaba R617FS7 channel and my Futaba 14 channel transmitter. I will be using that with this plane. 
it's no overkill in my opinion because I really enjoy using this radio system. But any six channel system will do because you have ailerons, elevator, rudder, throttle, and landing gear. The receiver goes in the bottom of the fuselage. I've opened it up and you can see the wires hanging out for the elevator, the rudder, the retracts, and the throttle. I will be adding the wires for the aileron in a moment. The wires are all plugged into the receiver now and using a Y harness that came with the plane I've connected the ailerons because I'm going to put the uh, control rods onto the plane before I put the wing onto the servos before I put the wings into the fuselage. Next I'll be installing the battery into the plane and that goes in the top of the fuselage. I have the receiver linked. You're hearing a bit of a hum. That is from the retracts. We will lower them now. They come down a little quick. We're going to have to work on that, see if we can adjust the speed, but that's for uh, later, not for this video. And we have, if you look at the back, the rudder servo is moving, and I have elevator control and the ailerons. So I will now put on the control rods, and we will uh, get this plane assembled. The control rods have been attached to the control horns. They have been checked. I've had to reverse a few of my uh, servo commands, but I now have working throttle, working retracts, working elevator, working rudder, whoops, rudder, which also turns the tail wheel. That's why there's two rods back there and ailerons as you saw earlier. I'm now going to fit the wings into the fuselage and assuming all goes right then glue them in place. I have slid the left wing into place. It's a nice snug fit, no problems. What I'm going to do to actually glue is I will be putting it on the top and bottom in here, up here, and I'll be putting just a little bit on the inner spot right here. What I don't want to have happen is to have glue ooze out and ruin the paint job. So there'll be plenty of surface glued and it's a snug fit so I'm sure it'll make it but by putting it primarily in the fuselage if any gets pushed it gets pushed in instead of being squeezed out. Well we now have both wings on. They are glued. The glue is drying. The radio gear has all been put back underneath the uh, bottom of the fuselage, or in the bottom of the fuselage. We have some cosmetic additions to add. Some mufflers go here, some air intakes go on the side wings, and a receiver antenna for the radio or an airspeed measuring device, I'm not sure which because I haven't looked it up yet, goes on the outer wing. And our plane will be done and ready to fly. And there is a look at the bottom. The assembly is complete. Stopping to shoot video and take still pictures from our review, the entire time of the assembly was under four hours. Without all those um, distractions, it probably would have been closer to two hours. The uh, main time consuming event was cleaning the hinges of the uh, paint so that I could get the pins in without having to force or damage items. While the assembly is easy enough for an uh, adult beginner, this is an intermediate or better plane because of the close landing gear. You will definitely want to take off and land into the wind because with close landing gear, when they're that close together, it's easy to tip over just like with an ME109. So, good looking plane. Anxious to get to the flying field. Unfortunately, it won't be today because I have to work. But the plane is assembled, looks nice, was easy to do, and uh, and I'm happy with the way that it went together.